everyone. Uh, my name is Joao, and together with my colleagues uh, Daniele and uh, Moshkan, we worked in the problem of live song identification sponsored by the company Rights Now. So our problem was to the had to do with the distribution of royalties. So in Italy, for example, every night a venue owner or a bar owner who plays live music in in their venue needs to compile a bordero, which is the file that you can see here on the slide on the right. They have to compile it by hand, and this um, file, uh, this uh, the, the completion of this file is very time consuming, and ends up most of the times not being done correctly because venue owners what they usually do is that they either um, copy the fi the files of previous night, the documents of previous nights, or they they fill it in with the songs that have been previously played or they are usually played. So this end up ends up not being fair, especially for smaller artists who don't get recognized and don't get their their fair share of royalties. A solution to this problem would be to have a way to to automatic record and send and recognize live performances by audio so that venue owners could potentially um, could potentially complete the, the bordero more easily. Uh, so the value of this, of course, would be that it would be enable a fair distribution of royalties. It would help and encourage venue managers and owners to uh, fill in the bordero in a correct way. And this would also create a smooth uh, communication flow between venue owners and record labels and also artists. Why is live song identification difficult, you may ask? It's because live, live music changes a lot uh, compared to, to studio recordings. You have changes in tempo, you have changes in key, you have noise, you have applause from the crowd. And typical and famous solutions like Shazam, Soundhot, they don't usually work in this type of setting. They, are not, they were not made to detect live performances and to identify them. An example that I can show you here between the studio and live performance is the following. Uh, I'm going to first show you the studio. So as you can see, there, there is quite a lot of difference between the two recordings. There is noise from the crowd, the crowd is chanting, the singer um, changes a bit the way he sings usually. So these type of differences are hard to spot by traditional algorithms. Um, so our solution that we worked on, we wanted to focus on something that would be both accurate and also scalable and efficient, especially for large uh, studio recording catalogs. Uh, we were also interested in identifying songs by using short audio chunks between 20 and 50 seconds because we don't want to, to send a large uh, audio file through the network, for example. Uh, our solution works by uh, extracting representations from the audio files using neural networks and comparing these representations to representations of studio songs in a large song catalog. Uh, we end up trying to measure uh, and to match uh, the live song with the, the catalog and we end up having a, a hopefully correct match from the catalog. So essentially what I'm explaining is that in case you have a 2D representation, you have here five songs in uh, in green, different songs that are studio recordings, and you want the live uh, to be as close as possible to the studio counterpart here, born in the USA. We want the live version to be as close as possible to its studio version. Uh, so what we did, we got some results. We we first evaluated an, an algorithm called Deja Vu, which was an, an algorithm adapted from the paper published by the Shazam company. It's not exactly Shazam, unfortunately, because the Shazam algorithm is not free, uh, but it's based, let's say, on it. Uh, also, we evaluated two neural network based models, Remove, and we worked on our base solution from the start. We see that the Deja Vu uh, did not perform very well, but we are not expecting because this type of algorithms are not, perf are not performant in live recordings. And uh, we got pretty good results using full songs on neural network based approaches. Since we were also interested in, uh, I, I forgot to mention that these results are obtained in a live test set that we collected uh, with around 300 songs with a total of around a thousand performances. And uh, to finish, we wanted to 
uh, check how the performance of our models would be in uh, smaller chunks, like I mentioned previously. So we improved our base solution from 59% accuracy to 68%, which is almost an increase of 10% in accuracy. And when I say accuracy, I mean the frequency of times that the correct uh, match was found in the database. Um, I wanted to end up saying that we still believe that this solution can be even further in improved. Um, we think that by uh, collecting a larger data set, by making some changes even further to the model, we can still improve and uh, and uh, improve the, the detection accuracy uh, in the live performance task. Um, to end, uh, this is our team. Uh, this Daniela on the left is a PhD, soon to be starting PhD student in the University of Geneva. Uh, me, I'm from Portugal and I'm a master's in astrophysics and uh, Moshkan is a doctor in electrical engineering from Germany. And we would like to thank also our mentor, mentor Furkan that helped us quite a bit uh, with uh, very interesting discussions and uh, with very interesting topics on, and he's a researcher by the way in the University uh, Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. And uh, we, at the end, we also would like to thank Sebastian uh, for helping us throughout the eight weeks. And we would like to thank our sponsors right now for giving us the opportunity to work in such an interesting project. Thank you.